Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this uh, Swan HQ service training. Um, we are coming to you from Louisville, Kentucky at Appliance Park. We are in the diagnostics lab uh, here at GE Appliance Park, and we are going to be uh, demonstrating the uh, Smart HQ service, uh, formerly Newfie Mobile Diagnostic System. So um, we're, as I said, we're in the lab. We've got lots of uh, exciting equipment that we're gonna use to exhibit the power of Smart HQ service to you for the next hour, okay? So um, we're gonna have some uh, folks in my team uh, introduce themselves. My name is Telema Harry. I am the director for the Smart HQ service initiative here at GE. Um, and the rest of the team are gonna introduce themselves. Uh, hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Anita Sudalai Kannu. I'm the Software Quality Assurance Engineer for Smart HQ Service. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Usich, Customer Care Service Manager for the South Central Region. Thanks for joining. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So between the three of us, um, we're going to go through and try to give you a, a really sort of good understanding of the capabilities of, of this tool. I'm um, just going to give you a quick uh, uh, overview of what we're going to be covering. So I'm going to do a very quick presentation um, where I'm just going to give an overview of the system. Uh, I know this might be old hat to many of you, but I know there are also some people watching uh, that may know almost nothing about the system and are just uh, uh, making a decision as to, or you know, uh, trying to learn to make a decision as to whether they want to opt in or not. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to move uh, fairly quickly so that uh, those of you who uh, have more experience will also get uh, a lot out of this discussion. Um, but uh, it's going to be a presentation. It's going to be mostly demo, so probably 80% demo. Um, we're going to try to focus on the newer issues as we demo. And that, I mean, the newer uh, features, I should say, as we demo. Um, and then uh, we will uh we'll give you uh, an overview of a new uh feature a significant new feature that we have just uh recently launched about uh, about a week ago and this is the parts finder application that allows you to order parts through the the uh, uh smart hq service system so not only can you uh troubleshoot uh, uh um, analyze performance issue on ge appliances uh, access documents, access the service website, uh, interact with the appliance, communicate with the appliance, but you can also uh, you can also buy parts through this system. So you know our goal is to make this thing um, uh, you know satisfy all your needs in terms of your interaction with with GE uh, appliances uh, from a service standpoint. So let me go to the uh, presentation. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to say is that uh, Smart HQ service is new fee mobile. And um, so we're just rebranding. Um, Smart, you know, new fee was kind of a difficult name for a lot of people. Uh, so Smart HQ service, I think, just is a better match for what we're doing. Um, and what are we doing, right? So what we're doing is, um, we are aggregating a very rich set of tools um, that have been developed over the years uh, for the GE factory service organization. Um, so for GE factory service technicians, we're aggregating these tools and making them available to uh, third party independent service company technicians uh, to use through this, through this very easy to use uh, mobile portal that runs on Android, iOS, phones or, or tablets. So, so in some ways, we're kind of uh, leveling the pay, playing field between the factory service, GE factory service technicians, and um, all of you out there that service GE products, okay? So, you know, uh, you know independent service companies are, we consider you partners uh, to GE in terms of servicing the GE consumer, and uh, we wanna make sure that you have everything you need to do the best job you can and uh, deliver the best um, lifetime ownership experience to GE consumers. 
Okay, so uh, these bullet points kind of just re reiterate some of the things I, I said. Um, so sometimes we call this a universal mobile GE appliance uh, service utility. So it's a, it's a Swiss army knife of tools. Um, all kinds of, of applications that will make you super efficient at uh, troubleshooting, diagnosing performance issues on GE appliances. Um, it is based on a PC application that um, the GE factory service technicians have been using for a very long time. So even though it is new to you, uh, it is not new. Um, GE factory service has been using this. It's been tested. It's robust. It's stable. Uh, it will deliver results for you. Okay. Um, the, this solution, of course, was designed explicitly for independent servicers that service GE products. Um, we have somewhere around 1,750, 1,750 independent service uh, technicians using this tool. Um, the number continues to grow. Uh, we are certain that we have a very satisfied user base. Um, not saying that there are any problems, but uh, we definitely get a lot of very positive feedback uh, and essentially zero uh, cancellations of the subscription. So that's uh, if no one's canceling, it means we're delivering some value. Okay. So, so this is the, the system. Uh, at the center of the uh, story here, you have this Bluetooth module that uh, plugs into the RJ45 port on the uh, appliance. This RJ45 bus uh, port taps into the data bus of the appliance and allows the appliance to communicate wirelessly to uh, a mobile app that runs on Android or iOS phones or tablets. Um, so, if you look at this system, uh, this, is a, this is a very, very powerful system. The, the app is able to uh, download firmware binaries from the cloud, and the latest firmware binaries and allows you to do firmware updates on GE appliances as many times as you want. Okay? Um, you can also, uh, when you're doing the, uh, diagnostics on the appliance, uh, you, ex you extract uh, diagnostic information like fault codes, alerts, uh, cycle history, or data logger information, and that information is all saved in the cloud. And, uh, and you can look up that data at a later point uh, if, you, um, if you need to, to look up information on a previous uh, service call uh, that you executed. Anita will go into detail about how that uh, functionality works. Um, so just uh, all in all, a, a, you know, just a very, very powerful system um, and gives you uh, what you need to be a, uh, a, an efficient uh, technician working on GE appliances. Okay. So um, without much ado, we'll uh, transition to the demo. We're going to start with uh, this uh, bottom freezer refrigerator that I have behind me. Okay. Um, I am already connected to it. Okay, so I have a, a Bluetooth module here, if I can find it, with the flashing LEDs. Okay, and this Bluetooth module is connected to wirelessly to this iPad uh, that uh, you are seeing the screen of on uh, on on uh, this. Uh, video feed that we're sending to you, okay? and you'll see that the the app uh, has captured the model number and the serial number. That's at the top left hand side of the screen. Okay, um, so when you plug in the the Bluetooth module, you open the app. This is the first screen that you'll see, and um, and you know at this point you're you're talking to the appliance, you're communicating with the appliance. So let me go through and just go. Uh, one by one, uh, walk through the features, okay? I'll start with this uh, product overview. This is something that we just added recently. Um, it's a feature that allows you to, to look at high, a high-level sort of uh, uh, um, overview of the product so that you can communicate with the, with the owner of the appliance um, about the high-level consumer-related features, right? 
So you, you know, it just gives you a way to 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 demonstrate and to to show the feature set that this appliance has. So I, I clicked on another uh, uh, link there. It's about this product, right? So this has videos. Um, a lot of time it will have text about, um, you know, giving you uh, tips about how to use the product effectively. Um, and so, uh, you know, you can certainly use these to, to, to communicate and tell the uh, homeowner uh, about the features of the appliance that they have and how best to get uh, uh, good performance out of the appliance. So uh, specs and details. Uh, this is just a lot of uh, high level information about the about these cap the the the, um, the features of this uh, product and then user um, manuals and, and, and downloads. So uh, user care manuals and ins uh, installation instructions, etc. Okay. All right. So let me, let me get keep going here. Um, so further down the screen, you'll see um, you'll see alerts. And you'll see fault codes. Uh, alerts and fault codes are similar but different. Okay, so uh, fault codes are the appliance itself doing self-diagnostics, um, and then when the app interacts with the appliance, it extracts those uh, fault codes and it marries them up with um, information, such as step-by-step -step instructions as, how, as to how to resolve that uh, that issue. Um, information about when that issue occurred. So in this uh, case, it happened two days ago. Um, and then is the fault code active? Uh, you know, some uh, issues are intermittent. So this tells you uh, if this fault is still triggering or if, it, if it's dormant uh, and has kind of gone away, okay? Um, alerts are different. Alerts are the app probing the appliance for certain conditions um, and certain states and based on those states determining that there's something uh, that they need to warn the technician about so um, it may be some something like a, a manufacturing defect that we can detect electronically uh, uh, through the 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 app um, by probing the appliance um, or it may be something simple like a um, a state that the appliance might be in that is a uh, normal operational state, but it's confusing technicians. So for example, it might be the, the appliance is in Sabbath mode, or the appliance might be in showroom mode. Um, and sometimes these kinds of conditions um, are not always, it, it's just not always obvious that that's what's going on with the appliance. And this can confuse consumers and it can confuse uh, 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 service technicians as well. Okay. so. So alerts, um, they, they, you know, another thing about alerts is that they can be, uh, we can develop alerts long after the product is shipped. So we identify an issue that's going on out in the field and we, ident we uh, develop an alert to uh, warn the technician of that issue. Okay, I'm gonna go down the screen. I'm, I'm now gonna look at the document access elements of this app, right? So I just clicked on document search um, it's doing a, a, a full model number search and it found documents related to that model number. Okay. Um, I can also get more creative and I can do a partial model number and a keyword search. So GTW 680 pump, it find, it's finding all the documents that uh, relate to GTW 680. Uh, and pump, and you know, I say all the documents, all the documents and media, all the all the content that uh, relates to those two search uh, parameters. So here I, I clicked on video, um, and it has uh, found a video about the GTW recirculation pump removal. I'll click on that, and it's served to me right at my fingertips. It's hosted in YouTube, but it's actually a private video. So uh, you can only access it through the system. You would not be able to access it just by going to YouTube. Let me back out of this. So as you see, as I go down the screen, um, there are is other ways to access documents. So we give a lot of different ways to access documents because um, depending on the document, there just might be 
you know, one way might be easier to find it than another. And you, you know, some people just um, prefer using one system uh, as opposed to another. So we, we try to give a lot of uh, mechanisms by which you can uh, access documents. So I just clicked on, uh, in that uh, recent bulletins section, I just clicked on one of the links there um, and it pulls up the document. So uh, at this point there's five recent bulletins uh, and I can view any one of those, okay? Can you uh, scroll down the screen? Uh, service manual, it's right there. Uh, mini manual. So uh, many of you know that uh, uh, there are technicians out there that collect mini manuals and uh, they will work on an appliance and they will take the mini manual with them. And the next technician that comes along, well, you know, it's kind of out of luck, right? There's no mini manual. So that's not a problem if you have new fee, right? If you have smart HQ service, um, the mini manual is right there in digital form every time. Um, the product origin, what's the, it, the, what's the goal of this? this is the, the goal of this is to tell you whether or not the appliance is in warranty, right? So um, we give you the manufacture date and we give you runtime. What is runtime? Runtime is how long this appliance has been plugged into the wall, right? So uh, if you see 500 days, you can be certain that this appliance is not in warranty, okay? Ethernet compatibility test. This is you're sitting, you're standing in front of a of a, a refrigerator, uh, an appliance, and you want to know whether it has an Ethernet port. Okay. Uh, sometimes you have to look around a little bit to find one. So uh, it'd be really nice if you could just type in the model number, and it tells you whether or not it is uh, compatible, whether it has an Ethernet port. You can also scan the model number uh, with a QR code. Uh, we um, make a lot of use of, of the QR code scanner um, because it saves you typing. And I know most people uh, don't like to type. I know I don't. So um, let me go to the next screen. So, um, so as I already alluded to, firmware updates. Now, you know, this is maybe, maybe the most powerful uh, capability in, in this system. So, um, you know, many of you might in the past uh, have had to order these uh, some modules or software update modules, those little white boxes. Um, so you go to a, you go to a, uh, a service call, um, you uh, determine that it needs, uh, the appliance needs a software update. Let's see. <laughs> So it, it determines that the appliance uh, needs a firmware update. Um, so, uh, so you have to order this module uh, from GE, and then you have to return to that home and do, uh, apply the module and uh, do the firmware update. Well, if you have uh, smart HQ service, you can diagnose the problem Whip out your, your new fee or your Bluetooth module, plug it into the appliance and do the firmware update right there and then. You know, no return trip. You know, this is a, a you know, a one time, one visit complete. Um, so that's money in the bank. I mean, that, that saves you time, uh, saves you effort. It just, just, just makes sense. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a win for everyone. You know, makes your, makes your customers happier. Um, I think uh, uh, you know that's a that's a valuable definitely a valuable capability. So I'm going to move on. So cycle history. So cycle history is a data logger inside the appliance. So what this does is on a refrigerator, it captures 140 cycles of data. A cycle is uh, one compressor off cycle is about an hour. Okay. So uh, essentially, this thing is capturing uh six days of data okay and it's about 70 parameters are captured so i'm going to go through and graph some of these parameters okay so so these are some of those parameters right so um so essentially 
you know how this appliance has been behaving in the case of a refrigerator for six days before you entered that home, right? So think of a scenario where uh, the homeowner tells you that uh, a few days ago they had a no cool condition or the, the refrigerator wasn't cooling. Uh, it seems to have recovered, but they're concerned and, and, and they don't know um, whether there's a problem with their refrigerator. Um, well, you can look at the data and you can say, well, uh, it looks like uh, Sunday morning you left your refrigerator or freezer door open for two hours. That's why the uh, refrigerator wasn't cooling. Um, and, uh, you know, you can show them the data. Uh, a lot of the time, the consumer themselves was not the one that left the door open. Uh, maybe it was one of, you know, one of the kids in the house. Um, you know, it could, it, you know, uh, there's all kinds of reasons why the door might have been left open. But you can show them data. Okay, so um, operate loads. This is a feature that allows you to actually talk to the appliance, actually control the appliance, turn on components, control every single component within the appliance. Um, so let me, let me start with uh, dispenser. Okay, so um, I think you know that in a refrigerator like this, uh, there are two valves that need to be activated for water to be dispensed, okay? So, so I'm gonna turn on the isolation water valve, and I'm gonna turn on the dispenser water valve, and you will see water dispense, okay? So it's pretty cool. So from, from your phone, you can control the appliance, every component in the appliance, okay? So uh, I'm going to uh, back out of that. I'm gonna show you something else that's visual, something that you can see. You can turn on the lights. Okay, I can turn off the lights. Okay, I'm gonna go to the auger motor. I'm gonna go back to the dispenser. Okay. I'm going to exercise the auger motor. Okay, so in the past, you might, to be able to do this, or to be able to test this component, you might have had to partially disassemble the appliance, apply power to that uh, auger motor, um, and then reassemble the unit, okay? Now you can, you know, do all that with just the push of a button, okay? So, you know, very, very, uh, very powerful. Just a whole different way, whole new world of appliance service. So, uh, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to switch to. I've, I've shown you uh, pretty much what I want to show you on this refrigerator. So I'm going to exit service mode, and then we're going to switch to this refrigerator prop. Um, so. Uh, from a Newfie standpoint, this refrigerator prop is a fully functional refrigerator. Um, but, of course, you can see the components. So, uh, so the things that we can show you on this that we may not be able to show you uh, on a real refrigerator, on a, on a fully built refrigerator. So it's connecting. Uh, so the, the app is connecting to the uh, prop or the refrigerator. It's establishing connection. Takes a couple of seconds to, to access the data, pull up the uh, user interface. There we go, okay. So, uh, Pulls up the documents, BIM, just like a regular uh, refrigerator. If I hit next, I'm going to go to operate loads, and I'm going to enter service mode. Okay, and I'm going to go to, I want to show you the, the, fan, the, the fans feature. Okay, so, um, 
So this thing allows you to turn on all the fans, turn off all the fans, turn on uh, each fan at high, medium, or low speed. Okay, so um, you think of a scenario where a uh, consumer is complaining about a noise condition. Um, and of course, that noise is never happening when you're in the home, right? So um, the ability to put all these, any of these fans into the state that it needs to be in to make that noise, um, this is very powerful. You can, you know, uh, go through the fans, put them at high, medium, or low speed, and have the consumer uh, confirm that, yes, this is indeed the noise they're hearing, and you can focus on that component, you can fix the issue. So I'm gonna just quickly show you that at a touch of a button, you're gonna see the condenser fans start to move, okay? And uh, you'll see the status go from zero RPM to uh, the, the speed that the fan is actually running at, 1641 reps per minute, okay? So, so, so that's what I wanna show you. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have Tim Music come up and use this uh, prop and new fee mobile and smart HQ service to demonstrate a real world situation. So a situ uh, you know, how this tool can be used in the real world uh, to solve real problems, okay? So he's, uh, he's identified an issue that he's gonna show you how to troubleshoot uh, using uh, this tool, okay? I'm going to go back to the dashboard screen uh, so that Tim can do his thing. Okay. Thanks, Telema. So now that Telema demonstrated all the functionality and the power that uh, this tool offers you, I, I kind of wanted to bring it home with a with a typical customer complaint and, and how would you diagnose this differently uh, with this tool than without. So my uh, customer complaint is freezer temperatures are getting warm. Her complaint is ice cubes are looking wet. It's not making ice as fast as it did, uh, or it's not making any ice at all. The food's getting soft. And so the last thing you wanna do on a refrigerator is open the doors to verify that. I, I know that's instinct, but with Nuvi Mobile, you don't have to do that because once you're connected to the refrigerator, you now have access to what's happening inside the box. So based on what the customers told you, you can then on your, on your screen swipe from right to left and that brings up this screen. These are all the thermistors on this refrigerator and there's a lot of them. But the one we're concerned about is the freezer thermistor because that's the customer complaint. And if you look at the second one down, that's freezer thermistor, it confirms. The freezer is at 36.8 degrees, which is which is obviously warm. Telma showed this in um, uh, an earlier time. You can go into cycle history, and you want to look at what is the freezer freezer thermistor temperature, and you can graph it. And so you can absolutely see a couple days ago the freezer temps were fine. We were in the nine to 10 to 11 degree range, which is normal. It's high normal, but it's still normal for a freezer temperature. And then all of a sudden for the past few days, we've been floating in the 36 degree temperature range. So that is confirming that we have a problem. Now we could go into service diagnostics and turn every component on one at a time, but why do that? Because the refrigerator is operating. It's operating in a normal state, although the freezer is not, not uh, cooling as it should. So let's see what's happening inside the box. Let's go into load status and you can check the cooling system. And you can see the freezer or the, or the compressor, I'm sorry, the, the compressor is on and the three-way valve is in freezer only mode. This is a multi evap so it has a three-way valve. So it's telling you that the three-way valve is in the correct position and the compressor is on. So we're gonna assume the sealed system or the cooling system is fine. Let's go and check other functionalities. Let's see the conditions of the fan. Also here, here we go. So if you look at the condenser fan, it's on super high. And if you look at the far right column, we're at about 1767 RPMs. Condenser fans on, but look at the freezer evaporator fan. 
it's supposed to be on low, but if you look at the far right column, we're at zero RPM, so the fan motor is not running. And so you don't have to take the evaporator cover off and empty out the freezer. What you want to do now is uh, how can I um, uh, separate, is it the control board or is it the evaporator fan motor itself at fault? And like demonstrated earlier, because we are connected and Newfi knows what model serial number we're working on, it goes up to the service website, extracts all the technical information, and it's at your fingertips. So we're interested in the mini manual. And you can really quick with a touch of a finger get to the mini manual and you can see how you access the freezer evaporator fan motor diagnostics. So you're going to pull the refrigerator out, get to the main electronic control board, go to the J8 plug, check the voltages. And how do you do that? It's also right on the tech sheet. There's a nice pictorial that shows you how to check voltage of, of the fan motor. So for this example, let's say uh, the voltage is correct outputting the control. So now we've isolated. We've isolated the control board that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So the fan motor is still not on, so we need to order an evaporator fan motor. So you have direct access to one part, and because you're connected to the electronic control, it knows what model serial number you're working on, and it pulls up one parts. For the PFE 28, you click on the freezer parts, and you want item number 411, and at the bottom of the screen, it tells you the part number for that evaporator fan motor. Uh, one more thing, I want to see if uh, so we did have we did have an F code. So yeah, so freezer evaporator uh, feedback missing. So that was another clue that that Nuthi would told would have told us there's something wrong with the evaporator fan motor circuit. Still doesn't say the fan motor is bad because an evaporator uh, feedback. Uh, missing could also be the control board as well. So I hope that helps uh, kind of put everything together and kind of how your thought process would be on normal customer complaints using the new T-Mobile diagnostic tool. Thanks a lot. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Okay. So, um, so you know, uh, we have the benefit of being in the, in the lab where all propped out. So we're going to, um, we're going to move to a, another prop. Okay, and uh, this is a GTW 460 washer, and I'm just going to show you some more uh, examples of how you can command and control the appliance uh, with the system. So it's connecting again. Now, one thing you'll see when it, it opens up is that, you know, the UI, the user interface is very consistent from one appliance to another. Um, we did that deliberately just to keep things simple, right? So the layout is going to be the same. You're going to have fault codes. You're going to have, um, uh, you know, alerts, all that in the same, in the, in the same location. Um, obviously, you see that a lot of fault codes here. Uh, but uh, I think that's because it's, uh, it was disassembled and reassembled and uh, put onto a wooden frame. So that would generally cause some faults, I think. Uh, so I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to operate loads. And I'm going to enter service mode. And what I'm going to show you is um, how I can command the mode shifter to tra transition state, right? Uh, so this is something visual, at least uh, something you can see very easily on this on this uh, uh, prop that we have, right? So you'll see that the uh, uh, the cam is in raised position, and I'm going to press mode shifter to spin, and you'll see the cam uh, lower and engage with the pulley system, and the uh, the app will say transition to spin. And it will eventually sell. It's in the spin state. Okay, good. So now I'm going to back out, and I'm going to go into diagnostic tests. 
And diagnostic tests uh, allow you to kind of hone in on a specific function that you want to test, right? So you don't want to go through a whole wash cycle. You just want to see the spin cycle. You don't want to go through a whole wash cycle. You just want to see the agitate, right? So um, I'm going to do a spin cycle. Okay. Uh, you can see that the basket speed is on zero. Target speed is on zero. Uh, I'm going to start the spin cycle. You'll see the graph start to react. So in the graph, you're going to see a target speed ramp up, and you're going to see uh, the actual speed chasing the target speed. Now, it's going to take a little while for this to settle down because uh, this is a, uh, it's, it's not a real machine, so uh, there's no load. There's no water, there's no uh, clothes. So this, it takes a little while for this control system to kind of understand the situation and adjust. And uh, in a minute here, you're going to see the uh, target speed ramp up. Pretty, pretty dramatically. There you go, 450. And now you're going to see the actual speed chasing that target speed. Now, you know, a lot of technicians use these kinds of, of images as a way to show the consumer a before and after image. So this is what it was looking like before. The graph was not what it should have been. I made some modifications, I made some adjustments, I fixed your appliance, now this is what it's looking like, right? So, you know, um, this makes you look really smart in front of the, uh, the consumer. And you know, sometimes that's half the battle, right? So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a great way to communicate with consumers, uh, give them confidence that you know what you're doing and that you're gonna be able to solve the problem, okay? So, um, so, We've been focused on, uh, on capabilities that, um, let me stop the spin here. We've been focused on capabilities that uh, are related to the Bluetooth module being connected to the app and communicating with the appliance. But there's many, many situations and there's many features that don't require a Bluetooth module and don't require you to actually communicate with the, with the appliance. In fact, um, probably more than 50% of the features do not require uh, any kind of uh, communication with the appliance, okay? So, uh, so for example, if you want to look at documents, uh, if you want to, um, if you want to uh, order parts, so I think I mentioned at the beginning, we, we've uh, implemented this functionality that will allow you to order parts. Um, if you want to look at data that was generated on a previous service call, uh, and you want to review that data um, that's in the cloud, you don't have to be in front of an appliance. You can be sitting on your couch, you can be in your truck, you can be you know, in the office, wherever, right? You can look at that data. So, um, so we want to show you that now. So uh, Anita's going to unplug the Bluetooth module, okay? And, um, and in a minute here, you are going to see uh, a pop-up that's going to say that the system has detected that the Bluetooth module has, uh, has been unplugged. And uh, it will give you the opportunity to start a no Bluetooth mode session, okay? So um, it always takes a little longer um, when I'm demoing. Sometimes we wonder whether it's ever gonna show up, but there you go, there it is. Uh, I click on new session. Okay, and it gives me the opportunity to go to no Bluetooth mode, um, but it's going to also pop up. Uh, it's going to so right now it's it's actually searching for the Bluetooth module, and I say it says no Bluetooth module found. And I say okay, and it transitions to no Bluetooth mode. So now Anita is going to go through a whole bunch of uh, features that you can utilize um, without being connected to the Bluetooth module. Uh Thank you, Telemo. So now we are going to see like uh, how Smart HQ service application can be used without the Bluetooth module. So as you can see on the right hand side, like uh, 
uh, in the mo uh, model input screen, there are three ways in which you can uh, enter the model number. Uh, the by default, the model number that is getting displayed is the is is the appliance that you have already been connected to. In this case, it's in washer. So uh, if you remember the model number, you can delete the model and serial number. You can enter the model number and you can click on the next button. The another way is like you have something called as a recent session. Tap on the recent session and it will pull up the records of the appliances that you have previously worked on. The another one which we have is something called as uh, scanning the QR code. So if you have the uh, QR code label, then you can scan it. So right now, like what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan a QR code label that belongs to a washer. Uh, click on the scan button. And if you see in just a minute, it will, yeah, there you go. So uh, it picks up the model and serial number and it displays the dashboard screen. See, uh, this dashboard screen is is same as what you have seen, like when Telema was explaining the, about the connected uh, session. So the only difference is here we don't have alerts or false, which is expected. So now uh, click on the next button and this is your simplified menu structure. So again, here we don't have uh, firmware update or Bluetooth diagnostics. That's because we are in, we are not connected to the Bluetooth module. So what I'm going to do is I'm just uh, going to go through some of the features. So the first one is photo uploader. So what is this photo uploader? So like it's always better like uh, doing a service call. So uh, it's always better to get a cap uh, to capture the picture of any problem so that in the future it will help it will be helpful for you to troubleshoot. So what you do is click on the photo upload icon, acknowledge it, click on the camera icon, capture the image, and use the photo. And if you want to uh, provide any comments, that's very well. Provide the comment and click on the upload button that is present on the uh, right hand corner. So what it does is, so like for using Smart HQ service, all the sessions you create, so the moment you close and reopen the app, all the data gets streamed. What are the data that gets streamed? Your fall codes, your cycle history, your alerts. And if there is any photograph that also gets streamed so that you can view those things at a later point if required. So let me go back. So the next feature which you are going to talk about is the one which Telma has already mentioned. It's the diagnostic history. So what is this diagnostic history? Uh, it's an application that allows you to view the historical information of an appliance that you have worked on previously. So how it is important? See, like, say for example, you had a service call a few weeks back. And again, if you are getting a service call on the same appliance, so you might want to go and check. When I went a few weeks back, what happened? What was the data? Or how the cycle history was there? Was there any fault code? Is there any chance like I would have missed something? So like you can go take a look at it so that you can do your troubleshooting in a more effective and efficient way. I'll just show you how it can be done. So click on the um, diagnostic history button. So this is the screen. So by default, it always auto populates the model and serial number that you have worked on. So I want to find out the list of model and serial number that I have worked in the, say for example, in the past year. In this screen, as you can see, it also gives you option to select based on a weekly basis, monthly, yearly, or you can customize. So I want a year, the records for a yearly basis, click on the search button. And based on the number of sessions you have created, it takes a little while to go and pull it up. So since I'm searching for a year, it, it's taking a little bit time. So here you go. So what I'm interested is, I want to find a session that has a photograph. So what you can do is under media, under the column media, if you find any circle, circle icon, that means that particular session has some photographs attached to it. So let me see if we can find out one such session. So yeah, there you go. There is a session that has a photograph attached to it. Let me click on that. And this is going to pull up like um, all the details, like if it has uh, so fault code, cycle history, or photographs. So if you click on the cycle history, so here it displays the cycle history that was present on that appliance on that day. Similarly, 
let me click on fall codes and fall codes also it's going to display if there are any fall codes generally it takes a little bit time so just give it a couple of seconds and it will display the fall codes there you go okay and then since i said this um, session already has a photograph let me click on the diagnostic photos and let me you can enlarge the image okay so that is it there you go okay let me come out of it and also like uh, there is an option for you like you can uh, email all these details to g technical assistance group if required let me come out of it and then the next one is one parts one parts is an interactive exploded drawing application which is very easy to use so all you do is like which part you want to select you just click on it and it gets added to your uh, pick list so uh, right now we are developing a feature that not only allows you to select a part and uh, put it in a pick list but will also allow you to place an order so telma would be providing those details in a few minutes and then like uh, the next one is in smart hq service uh, there are multiple ways in which you can access documents you have seen how it can be accessed from the dashboard screen and how it can be done from diagnostic uh, uh, document search and the another thing is service website uh, this is same as like your customer net nothing new the only thing is like if you have access to smart hq service you have access to the service website you don't require any special login credentials or anything like that okay let me close this one and thank you all for your time and i'll give it to telem Okay, thank you, Nia. Great job. Thank you. Okay, so um, so we're approaching the end here. Um, hey, uh, Anita alluded to the fact that um, uh, you know one parts is going to be integrated into our parts ordering system. So uh, just to to uh, illustrate a little bit. Um, so the way this is going to work is that um, you're going to be able to select parts from one part, uh, put them into a a cart, and then submit that cart. And that um, list of parts will be sucked into our parts application that will actually allow you to buy the parts uh, from GE through our parts finder parts ordering engine. So, uh, so it's going to be uh, pretty cool. Now, um, what I'm, I'm going to do here is um, we're going to talk a little bit about the parts finder application. And I need to give you a little bit of background uh, to be able to uh before i go to the demo so let's go back to the presentation for a minute here. okay so so why am i showing you a customer net a login screen now the reason i'm showing you this is because yeah we spent the last year and a half telling you that you have to log in as a non-ge employee um and with your uh email and password but to buy parts you are going to have to log in with uh, your uh, customer net login, and you're going to have to select the username and password login option, not the non GE employee option, but the username and password login option if you want to buy parts. Okay, uh, there's a, a, a secondary process with, uh, through which we, uh, my team, approves your access to the new fee mobile app, um, but it's kind of cool because you're now going to be able to log in to all the GE systems, uh, customer net, and the new fee mobile app with the same password. That's if you want to buy parts. If you're not uh, interested in buying parts, but you're interested in selecting parts that need to be purchased, um, so you're a technician out in the field, you want to be able to select parts that need to be purchased, you want to be able to create a cart of parts that need to be purchased, um, you can log in with your non-GEA uh, non employee profile. Um, and it, obviously, in, in that situation, you log in with your uh, email and password. And, and at that, that situation, you'll you be able to go into the parts application, you'll be able to create a cart, um, and you'll be able to submit that cart for review. And then someone else within your organization who has a username and, pa and password, a customer that username and password that's associated with a parts account, a GE parts account, can actually execute the order. 
Okay, so we've tried to create this sort of separation between the technicians in the field that are ordering, sorry, that are selecting the parts and identifying the parts that need to be ordered, and then the uh, the administrators in the office or the service manager in the office is actually making the decisions as to what part should be ordered. Um, so, so we we think this will this structure will work well, and so. Um, uh, I hope uh, I've explained it clearly, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the uh, uh, the demo. Okay. So I'm going to go to the Parts Finder application. Takes uh, things for a little while, and I am going to go back here for a minute. So the reason it pulled up the GTW 680 uh, and and brought up the subsystems of the GTW 680, uh, sorry 460, is because that's what I'm connected to with my new Fiat, app, right? But I could I can put in any model, okay, and I can search. Um, it also shows me information like um you know frequently ordered parts in the last 30 days by all new fee users that should be smart hq service users um frequently ordered um parts in the last 30 days by your company um and frequently order parts in the last 30 days by the user that is currently using the app right so this provides you lists that are uh, a sort of quick list where you can find the parts that are common that you're using frequently. So let me let me stick with the GTW 460 and I'll do a search. Um, once again, you can see illustrations. So you can click on this and it'll show me an illustration of the part. Um, I go to content, hit on controls and backsplash. It takes a few few seconds to load up all the parts. As, uh, you know, it has to do a lot of lookups. It's looking for pricing information. It's looking for uh, availability status. It's looking for, uh, you know, a few things. And it's, it's a long list. So there it is, okay? So uh, to the left-hand side, you will see a list of the parts in that subsystem. Once again, if I click on illustration, it'll show me the illustration for this subsystem. Okay, go back to content. I can select parts that I wanna to add to my cart, okay? As I said before, in the middle, it shows availability. On the left-hand side, it shows pricing. So that's your price, okay? That's your company price. And then on the far right-hand side, you can uh, select the parts that you wanna to add to your wish list. So this is a, a list of parts that you can just go to uh, really easily and add to your, uh, add to your cart. Okay, so I'm going to add these parts to my cart. Okay, you'll see these parts. Okay, I don't have that many parts in there, but um, I can view the parts. Okay, and I can check out. And this is uh, the default address. Obviously, this is not a real address, but the default address that the that the part would uh, would ship to. Uh, you can choose uh, any address uh, that you want. So you can add addresses. You can have as many addresses as it is is you know imaginable, um, and uh, you can add a new address uh, through that this button here. So I click next. Uh, this is the metadata for the shipping. So uh, what kind of shipping are you, are you looking for here? Uh, regular versus, um, you know, uh, emergency, et cetera. And uh, I preview my order. I could go back and edit the order, add, uh, add additional parts, or I can just go ahead and place the order. Now I'm able to place the order and, and I saw the button uh, place order because I'm logged in with my customer net credentials, 
if I was logged in with my uh, um, uh, non-GE login credentials, uh, I would not be able to place the order. I would be able to build the cart though. Um, and, and then someone else within the organization uh, will be able to actually uh, place the order. So, so that's the end of uh, the presentation in, th in terms of the information that we wanted to convey. Um, except for uh, our contact information, that I'm going to go back to here. Okay, so so this is our contact information. So um, obviously, the, uh, physical address you probably won't be using much unless you want to send us a Christmas card. Always welcome. Gifts are welcome too. But um, you do have the phone number. Uh, 502-714-2029, uh, call that number. You will always reach one of us, uh, either myself or Anita, uh, unless we're both training, which is what's happening at this moment. But um, we, we really strive to, um, to provide the best possible customer service to resolve any issues that you might have. And, uh, and so please, please feel free to reach out to us with questions, with um, whatever, whatever, whatever you need us for uh, in re regarding Smart HQ service, we we are happy to help. Okay, um, you can also reach us on our support website, newfimobile.smarthq. Uh, no, newfimobile.support at geoappliances.com, and uh, please feel free to visit our website, smarthqservice.com. A lot of useful information there. Uh, that's where you go to order. Uh, there's also training videos, uh, customer testimonials, all kinds of good, uh, good information on there. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time uh, to listen to us. Thank you for, um, for joining this training session today. I hope uh, we were able to, to provide the information you need. And um, we look forward to hearing from you. We, uh, thank you for being part of the Smart HQ service uh, ecosystem. Have a have a great afternoon, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you.